Ding 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 uh, uh, yes. At least we have no fun. Never. It's very important. No fun. You can't. Right. Personal development is very serious. Very, very serious. All right, everybody. If you are here, first and foremost, please let us know that our audio and video is coming through okay. Smash some likes. Say hello. Let us know you're out there. We're excited to be here with you today. And if this is your first time, definitely say hi and... Just so we can extra, extra warmly welcome you. Yeah, just say new in the chat box. That way we know you're out there. We have been welcoming lots and lots and lots of new people into the community this past week. So uh, hopefully you guys are here to join us live. If not, you'll catch it on the replay. I wanted to uh, remind you uh, before we get cracking today that at the end of this training, we have a uh, special gift for you guys. So stay tuned. It's a good way to uh, participate here and save yourself um, some money in, in the meantime. But it's our thank you for you guys for showing up on these uh, live calls and participating. Um, honestly, in our lives, we have found that uh, <clears throat> showing up is probably like 80% of the battle right there. So just those of you guys who show up week in, week out, we want to, we on, on our, excuse me, we want to honor you for being here and uh, give you something for your effort, okay? Um, next thing I want to just kind of put in here is, you know, it's one thing to just show up to these trainings week in and week out. It's another thing to just have an intention with what you want to pull from this, right? So either we can kind of be like, um, there's kind of like two ways to be in life. There is the spectator, right? Who's sitting in the stands watching the, the game unfold, having judgments about it. Um, telling the players and the coaches what they should do. And to be perfectly frank, that's how most people participate in life. They're, they're never willing to get on the field, uh, risk much of anything. And so it becomes a lot easier to be the bystander who's judging. And you don't have to travel far down your news, news feed and Facebook to see that, right? Um, and, and so just to, obviously, we're all dealing with a lot in the world today. And, you know, our, our contention usually is, a, is if like, you are really upset about something that's happening in the world, uh, but you have no intention to enact anything that would that would change it. Then, outside of just upsetting yourself and putting, you know, some bad juju around your head, you know, what's the point? So, like, if there's an area of life that you want to make a difference in, then of course, like, you know, go take that action, pay attention to that area of life. If you have no intention of of doing anything about it, then what's the point? So, same thing here. When you show up, it's like having an intention of what it is you want to pull from showing up to these live streams uh, is really helpful. Now you may not know the topic at hand, you may not know what we're talking about, but what it looks like is bringing something in your life that's at stake, okay? And having an intention is not like, I have to be, I have to be here, I have to look at everything through it, just like kind of let that hang in the background. You know, if you are here for a breakthrough around money, cool, then set some kind of intention around having a breakthrough with your money. Uh, if it's about your relationships, it's a, if it's about your health, about your spirituality, about your growth, about whatever it might be, just kind of energetically let that be here. Say, here's the intention that I'm bringing forth. And what you'll find is that whatever it is that we're bringing through, it's going to help that area because yeah. it's like anything we bring through here, we have a very holistic approach. We're never like, hey, let's just hyper-focus on this one thing. And, and the truth is that we have found over the years, it truly doesn't matter what people pick that they want to work on. If you have a breakthrough in one area of your life, it transcends and it goes into every area of your life. Nothing stays 
put. You don't have a breakthrough in your health and go, and it doesn't impact your relationships or it doesn't impact the way that you work around money. Everything has an impact on everything. So what you really want to tune into is like, what's the most important aspect for you? Well, like what's urgent for you right now to have a breakthrough in and then just kind of have that hanging out in the space. Is there anything you want to add about any of that, Broski? No, I think that's that's where we're so many people just have this like, like confined thing about this visualization, this this intention, and you you tend to miss. It's like a horse with blinders. That's the visualization I always get. It's like you know they put that on so the horse doesn't get distracted. And it's like when you create these intentions, yes, the blinders are on, but at least from our experience and our clients' experience, we're going to talk about some of that today. Um, this leaves you in a world of just linear thinking of like, this is the only thing that can be. And you, you disconnect from this world of magic and allowing. And I know all of us have had an experience where life showed up in a way that was so unexpected. It like, it took your breath away of how this event or circumstance or whatever ended up working out or turning out or whatever it might be. And you tell this story to other people and they're like, how did you do that? And you're like, I, I, I didn't do anything, right? Like, like it just kind of showed up that way. And so that's kind of the invitation is create that and then just let it go. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and you guys can take an example from Tobias, who's sharing uh, his intention there. If you feel like you want to drop your intention to the comment box so we can seed the space. Guys, it really actually, ma this stuff actually matters. This is not just like hokey pokey. Like we've been doing this for a long time. Like, Every time that we all get together, there is an energetic container that gets created between everybody. Okay. This is, and this is not science fiction anymore. This is science fact. And so what we see the container with really matters. And you'll see that that intention, setting that intention changes something about what can actually come through even Elon and mind system to inform what it is that you're looking for. We actually need each other in this way. So feel free to share your intentions in the group. Lastly, I want to tell you guys, if you're watching this on the business page, um, most of the dialogue, most of the commentary happens actually inside our Facebook group. We just do it there as a secondary thing. So if you feel like it, come into the Facebook group right now and watch it from in there, and then you can actually see all the, the commentary dialogue. We see it all in one stream, but you guys might see it differently. So if you want to participate that way, feel free to. Okay. All right. So let's get to uh, the topic at hand. Um, I want to talk to you guys about acceleration in terms of your growth and transformation and, and really hit up on like three different things. Maybe we'll come up with more as we just kind of explore this with you guys. Three things that we deem are like critically important in order to, I, I, I'm hesitating here because acceleration feels odd to me <laughs> as a way. I'm, I'm, it's like, I have to talk to your minds. And so the mind wants to, well, how do we pick up the pace here? How do I get through this quicker? And I want to tell you that in the reality that I live in, it's like everything has its own pacing and time. However, in my in my worldview, it's like whether you're looking at personal development or not, in a, in, in a sense, at a level of reality, it doesn't really matter because everyone is evolving all the time. Okay. I always look at the people who are, are coming here and doing this work. You guys, to me, are like early adopters of the work. And I, I always use that iPhone analogy. It's like in 2008, when the iPhone came out, everybody who was using BlackBerry, it was like, this is the best phone ever. You got an iPhone. Suddenly, ooh, it opened up this whole new reality to you. Like I remember the first time I got, I paid $1,000 for my first iPhone and I bought it on eBay. It was like this like amazing thing. And this is before the app store even existed and all that kind of stuff. And I remember I was walking down the streets of New York with my 2G terrible quality internet but I remember it was the first time I was listening to music and I was mapping my way to find somewhere to walk while searching for something on the internet. And I just remember that feeling of like, Oh my God, this is insane that I can do all this today. Of course. It's so like, we all take it for granted, like how amazing that technology is, but like, and, and of course it's like coming up like one pixel at a time. And I still thought it was the most unbelievable experience of my life. Right. But I, suddenly became aware of something that other people didn't. I remember I would see like iPhone people, we were, there weren't many of us, I'd be like, that's cool. And then I would try to tell the BlackBerry people how stupid BBM is and that they should move and they didn't understand what I was talking about. So like to me, you're here because you're an early adopter. You, want, you're, you at least want to take a peek 
at the manual and you're like, huh, interesting. There's new technology back here. How do I use that? Eventually this will become just like that iPhone. It'll become, we'll take it for granted that this is just regular everyday life. And we'll have these faded memories that life used to be some other way. And I want to tell you that the work you're doing interpersonally is so important because we are, we are setting the grooves. We are laying the tracks for consciousness. This is not, I'm not saying this uh, as a thing just to make you feel better. I'm telling you scientifically, people who are early adopters, like everything else are setting the tone for everybody else. You also make this work available, bioavailable, energetically more available for everyone on the planet. Look at our history. You know, what was uh, so progressive in the fifties today is mundane way of thinking, right? Yeah. Not in a lot of time. What's yeah. funny is that as cool as that technology was, right? And like, it was like so forward. So now we're, I think this is like iPhone 13 they're coming out with. So let's say like 13 years later, right? If we gave any of you the original iPhone and we're like, here you go, do your work today. You would chuck that thing against the wall because you would be so frustrated at how like you push and like nothing happens and you're like, is this thing working? Why isn't it working? And at the time it was like the best we got. And it just, as you're talking, I'm like, we have so many of these old technologies and habits and, and patterns that we go into that are so outdated for what it is that we want to be aligned to. And then we wonder why we can't get to that place, but it's like, you're just using old technology. You can, you can want that iPhone, original iPhone, to do all these amazing things. You can intend as much as you want, you can visualize as much as you want, you can buy different battery packs and you can, it doesn't matter, it's restricted by its capabilities. And, and what we have found, a lot of people that come to this work is, you've done a lot of work. You've done a lot of mindset work and NLP style work and reframe stuff and right, like you've done it. And, and what you keep bumping up against is that edge, that, that restrictive place where this work actually works. And what you're starting to touch on is where it doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, it leads to frustration and upset and, and, uh, and anger. But it's not that you're doing anything wrong and it's not that you've wasted your time or any of that. It's just, you've kind of reached the end of what that thing's capable of. That's it. Mm -hmm. we're, we're here to really speak to you guys about evolving, right? Like everything evolves, everything changes. Uh, so first of all, like uh, for those of you guys who haven't, or you want to just claim again, like what's the intention? Like what's the area of life? Is it health? Is it wealth? Is it relationships? Just write one of those three or another one in the comment box so we kind of know what you're looking at. And then it's like, you know, everything's evolving. Do any of us really think that the way that we learn to do something or be some way in our house was the absolute pinnacle and best way that could have ever been done? Like that's, yeah. that's, a, that's an absurd way of thinking. Yet, because we don't look at it that way, we do think that we have all the right answers. We do think, hey, this is how we did it. Even though you look at your parents and you'll be like, I can't believe they did it that way. And guess what? That's the way you're going to end up doing it too. Not because you wanted to or you made choices because we have these biological things called mirror neurons and we mirror what we learn and whatever with the foundation was set in the first zero to three, zero to seven years of life. That's what you know. Like how many of you guys have gotten into a relationship with somebody and you're like, I'm never going to be like my mom and dad. And suddenly you hear that shit coming out of your mouth and you're like, oh my God. And it doesn't seem like you're the one controlling it. It's just, yeah. it's like, there it is. Like you're saying those things. That's the programming. And until we identify that that's a part of you, not all of you, that's just a part of you. And then how do we work with that part? What was that part needing? What does that part need to relax finally, to let go, to surrender and to evolve and shift into something else? And that's what today's conversation is about. And we're going to hit it on a few different levels here. Okay. Like I want to talk about a little bit of mindset, some energy, and then like practices. Okay. So just so Elon is on board with what I want to talk about here. And you guys know too, I want to really want to talk about three things. I want to talk about uh, how it is that we uh, generate our reality. How do we test and generate our reality? That's number one. 
Second one is about the power of forgiveness. I know that's not new for you guys, but it's worth talking about and creating a distinction here that allows quicker access to forgiveness. And that's what, if I was to tell you, what's the number one thing that accelerates growth? It's forgiveness for yourself and other people. In okay. fact, I, I will tell you that uh, they've done studies about releasing, uh, the, I don't know if it was theta waves or delta waves in the brain, whatever the, the, the one that's like the uh, deepest levels of meditation. And they have found that the quickest path to get to those states is forgiveness. Yeah. And the bigger the thing that you were forgiving, the deeper you went into those states. So just like to put that in mind, a lot of people think forgiveness is about the other person. It has very little to do with the other person. Just Yeah, if you guys if you guys ever saw that movie uh, Inception, great movie, he talks about um the way that they do inception for the individual that they're like, you know, working on uh is through catharsis. Through healing the relationship with this father, something happens. And that's what we have seen now through 20 years of work. Catharsis, especially in relationships, will literally uh, decimate, and I mean in the best way, like get rid of an entire view of reality and generate an entire new view of reality. So forgiveness and catharsis is, is like a, a portal, is a doorway to evolving very quickly. Now, most of us, again, we'll talk a lot about this, hold on to our view of others, ourselves and whatnot. We don't know how to let go. And so that's why we want to talk about forgiveness. It's like, how do we get to that energetic place where like literally we flourish from that location? And then the last one is like, what are daily practices? Like, what can we be doing? And then we'll talk and I have a little play on words there for you guys. And again, I want to remind you, we have a gift for you at the end. So stay tuned all the way through. Okay. So um, the first piece here, and Elon and I will just kind of jam out back and forth with you guys, is like, there's a few ways that we determine our reality. But there's one I really want to talk to you guys about because it's highly prevalent in our world right now. It's highly pre prevalent anytime you see a lot of uh, this push and pull, a lot of anger in our society. And it's really, really simple. Is one of the ways that humans uh, look at whether something is true or real for them is through agreement. Very, very simple. Okay, through agreement. So the the test here is is like if a lot of people agree about something, then it must be true. Now you got to realize that whatever viewpoint you take, right? Vaccines being the good thing here. Not that I want to bring a hot topic issue and be like, what do you guys think about it? Whatever you think about it is fine by me. Whether you want to do it, you don't want to do it. That might even aggravate some of you guys that I have that point of view. You know, it's like I, it's like you do what you will with it. But at the end of the day. You got to get that you at some level, based on the programming that you have, belief systems that you have, how it is that you try to really create safety in your system. And that's all it comes down to, guys, is everybody out there, including yourself, is trying to get a place in their system internally that they feel safe. Okay. Now, the way that most of us do safety through society is we need people to agree with us in order to prove to ourselves that our view of reality is true. So what do we do? We go out there and we enroll people in our ideas. And this is why we share and we gossip and we complain because what we're really looking for is who else wants to hear this? Who else shares that complaint, <laughs> you know, and, um, and, and who's going to listen to this and do they feel and act and think like me about that? And the more people I find that are like that, I feel, oh, okay, then it must be true. That must just, I am not the only one that thinks this way, then it must be true. And so then we feel safer about our reality, but that safety is an illusion. Because of course, there's other people out there that don't believe that and don't think that way. And this is how wars are fought, basically, is just two countries or two opposing positions or two governments and two opposing viewpoints in government and this and that coming together being like, if you don't see it our way, we don't feel safe. Yeah. And so we're going to go and, Get everybody to vote for this idea to prove to the other side that this is how reality really is. But, you know, so, so again, I'm like showing how this shows up in our reality. And look, at some point, again, talking about evolution here, didn't everyone on this planet think that the earth was the center of the universe? It's kind of a big and deal. Flat. What? And flat. And flat, right. Didn't everyone think that the earth was flat? Still, we got still some people out there that believe that that's true, right? And, and that's fine. So, but like, I want to point to those things. Like those were some pretty big ideas. Now, we've all heard like the stories, right? Like when, when somebody finally proposed that the earth wasn't the center of the universe, there was like, it was heresy. 
to kill them for this idea because of an opposing point of view. And I want just to show you that this stuff still shows up in our society and shows up even in our own architecture. Like I'm, I'm not free of this. I'm just aware of it, right? Like an iPhone, I'm aware of the technology. So I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Like I'm really upset about that. What is it that I'm trying to find agreement for? I'm not like, I know for a fact that this is true. I'm, I get curious when that comes up in my system instead of getting defensive when that comes up in my system. I watch the defense and then I get curious, okay? Most of us just act from defensiveness. Again, trying to find safety. It all makes perfect sense why you're doing it. So don't make yourself wrong. But like the access point here is noticing you're, you're trying to defend something. Yeah. So get curious about, huh, I wonder why I'm getting defensive about this. Huh, I wonder why they have that point of view, right? And suddenly you'll find yourself as that stuff comes in, you can evolve very quickly. So, you know, even with the center of the universe example, like it wasn't so much that like, okay, that's, that couldn't possibly be true. It just, it philosophically had to change everyone's idea of what a human being was. If the earth was the center of the universe, then the human race was the most important thing in the universe. Do you understand that? We, we were as if we are, by the way, still you know, as if by divine itself by spirit put here for everything to be around us as if this is the pinnacle of evolution. I just want you to think about that idea. And so by saying that it wasn't the center of the universe, society had to come to grips with that we were not the pinnacle of evolution, that we were not the only important thing in the entire universe. Now we are still divinely, you know, it is, we are all coming from source, but so is everything in the universe, you know, all that stuff. So, that's why these things are so challenging. And we think that like it's been this way forever, but it really hasn't. Usually these ideas are only a few hundred years old and have shaped society to be a certain way. And we think, well, this is the way society always was. And it's like, it wasn't. <laughs> it used to be yeah. completely different with completely different ideas. There was a period of time, not too long ago, funny that I'm using the word time, that people didn't know what time was in terms of the way that we know clocks. And so could not measure distances, how to travel from one place to another the way that we do today. So the way that they did it was it's a three days walk. The sun comes up three times between this and that, right? They had different measuring sticks. Today, we measure by perfect distances so much so that our GPS can tell us the exact moment we're going to arrive somewhere. Yeah. Right? Diff different context. Anything you want to add to this? Nope. Okay. So like really the takeaway here is like, Hey, if you know that one of the ways that you are testing and perceiving your realities through agreement, be mindful of where it is that you're collecting your agreement from. Realize that, yes, that's going to feel solid and true and, and important and all these kind of things, but it's like, it's not. I, I personally would love to see, and I think it's not big of an ask or a big of a stretch, and it kind of seems odd that we can't do that naturally. We almost have to like train ourselves into this, is to actually hold two ideas within ourselves that are paradoxical in nature. Just try that on. Like, what would it be like to hold both ideas at the same time? Not have to take a position on anything. Just be like, these two things actually can't coexist and I'm still going to hold them in my system together just to remain curious. And the reason I say that, I won't go into a long dissertation on this. Uh, quantum physics is really big on this right now and, and people are starting who are really looking at this or starting to notice this phenomenon. I went into a very long class many years ago that discussed this in great detail. And I spent 10 days with these like master philosophers and people in the, in the spiritual and personal development space speaking about paradox, about, I, about ideas that completely contradict each other. Now, I want you to understand that our universe is built on paradox. Like we now know them at the quantum level, literally paradox exists everywhere. It's the fundamental nature of our reality is paradoxical. When you view paradox, when you think paradoxically, it actually frees up your mind. Because what it does is the same thing that Buddhist teachings and Tibetan teachings and all those things point at is it allows for the mind to detach for meaning. And when the mind detaches for meaning, you're free. You're free to explore. You're free to grow. You're free to create. This is a huge path to acceleration. So you got to realize, again, what you're, uh, what you're trying to find agreement for is also what you're attached to. And that attachment is disallowing for you to have new experiences that can help you grow very rapidly. Okay. I do want to say one thing about agreement is just as a practice, uh, notice as much as you can your addiction to being right. 
And it is this addiction to being right that has you go seek out this agreement, right? Like for us to be wrong is not just like, oh, you're wrong. If it was just that, then we wouldn't have wars and people wouldn't kill themselves, like kill each other. It's like you fight for what you believe in, big and small, like your life depends on it. Yes. Like someone is trying to kill you. So when you start to feel that, this insatiable appetite for being right, you can really start to get why you live in a world where you keep testing your reality through this agreement. You're always looking for feedback to reflect back to you. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. They're wrong. And then notice even in the I'm right, there's that piece of they're wrong. Right. And now there's this them over there that are bad, wrong people. And notice how much anger, even as I'm talking about it, you might start to feel like, notice how much anger you have against the side that has your opposite view. Mm -hmm. Notice how much you gravitate to people and ideas and articles and videos that reflect back to you how right you are. But if you were to watch something or listen to someone that has your opposing view, notice how much resistance even anger you have towards that other side. It's just something really interesting to note. And by the way, none of that is your own doing. Yeah. None biology. of that. That's biology. It's, it, it, exactly. It's just a biological program running in the background. You're not even conscious enough to think of things at that level. And whether you're aware of it or not, can you start to see how this is absolutely running your life? Like day to day running your life. Guys, I'm not even gonna go global on here because we all got that. Your kids need to brush their teeth after, after they eat, right? Mm -hmm. Or before bed and, and at night. If your kid doesn't brush their teeth at night or in the morning, you tell me, are you like, oh, yeah, totally cool. Yeah, you do you, don't worry about it. You got some fucking opinion about it, right? And like, you're going to make that opinion known. It's everywhere. People should turn on their blinkers before turning. If that person in front of you doesn't turn on their blinker, are you like, oh, look at that. Didn't turn on their blinker. No, that's not your reaction. If someone's driving five miles per hour under the speed limit, are you like, yeah, totally cool. Let's do that. No. I just want you to see like, it's everywhere. Yeah. And half the things that you are right about or want to be right about, you don't even tell people that this is an expectation that you have, right? And so when they don't live to that righteous version that you have, it really fucking pisses you off. Mm -hmm. Unspoken rules for sure. Yeah, so someone said, uh, <clears throat> You can be right or you can be happy. And we can we can apply that to anything. You can be right or you can be rich. Most of what people don't have, it's gonna be a stingy one. Hold on to your butts. Most of what people want in their lives but don't have is because they're stuck in being right about something. That's pretty much it. If you can give up being right, suddenly it just opens up a whole world to you. Right? People don't realize what it is that they give up just for holding on to, to ideas. That have long, by the way, since either other people do it differently or have evolved or whatever it might be, right? So everything's always in evolving. Second one here, as I mentioned, is, is forgiveness. And like I said, forgiveness is a big one. Um, it's a topic, honestly, we could probably discuss for an entire day. So doing it you know, in five or 10 minutes is not going to do a complete justice. And this may be triggering too, because we understand that that some of you guys have, ex have had experiences that that truly have violated you, whether it was physical or sexual abuse or something to that extent. And so when you bring up the topic of, of forgiveness, it triggers all those parts because you're like, how the fuck do you forgive this demonic ass shit in the world? And, and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you that it really takes something. It takes courage 
to to see ultimately that the forgiveness is really not for that person. It's really for you, right? Ultimately, the, everything that we don't forgive, again, maybe it's a line that you've heard before, but it's like you drink the poison and hope other people die. And most of us walk around with that either at some micro or macro level about a lot of things in our lives. It's because because part of being a human being is, is going through a lot of experiences that break our heart. I'm just going to like let that hang for a moment before I talk over it. Whew. Yeah. And so just take a deep breath now that I've said that and see if you can drop your awareness down from your head down towards your heart a little bit. As we talk about this, it's kind of a tender subject. <clears throat> and so, so there's the internal work that again, we can't do in a five for 10 minute session here. Okay. Talk to you guys about forgiveness. What we can offer you is that, again, like most things, there are certain ideas that we've had that have been conditioned into us through society, government, school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that have been around for a very long time. And one of these ideas is that if you forgive somebody, you condone the action that they've done. Okay. So just wanting to kind of like notice that, that that's kind of the agreement in society. If we forgive this person, then then we um, are condoning what they've done. And so we resist forgiveness because we don't want to be the person that condones evil or negativity or whatever it might be in the world. And that makes sense. Like that actually makes sense, right? I, I, want, to, I want you to play with the idea that forgiveness and condoning action are two completely separate things and two separate phenomenons altogether. And so a lot of times in our language and in our society and in our belief systems, what we do is we collapse ideas together and it makes those ideas very sticky and very challenging. And this is one of those ideas. We have a, a litany of these ideas that Elon and I have discovered over the years. Okay. And so if you can kind of get that this forgiveness is more of a, it's forgiveness is a, is a state of being. It's not something that you do. We can put it then into action from our beingness once we've resolved something in our system and say, hey, this has been forgiven, okay? And what to forgive somebody means truly, in our, in our perspective, is like forgiving someone a debt. If I, if I lend you $10,000 and eventually I say, I forgive this debt, then the debt is wiped clean and I never get to bring it up again. I don't get to hang it over your head. I don't get to use it against you. I don't say, hey, remember oh, five years ago, I gave you 10 grand, now I need a favor from you. That's not forgiveness. That has nothing to do with forgiveness at all. Okay, so forgiveness is like is like truly relieving that experience from yourself and the other. And again, realizing that by doing that, even if a violation was done to you, we're not saying that that was okay. You can you can again hold both. You can forgive and not condone an action at the same time. What a whopper of an idea, right? Anything you want to add to that? Nope. Okay. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna again. We could go into that forever. I know some of you guys are like, but, 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 but. And then there's like, what about this? What about that? And you need to have an answer for every single one of them. This is just to plant a seed as a way for you to get curious and explore maybe things that you feel stuck in, maybe relationships. Maybe it's like a parent or a sibling or a friend that you haven't talked to or 10 and 20, 30 years. Maybe you barely even remember what happened there, but you still have that disdain and anger in your system. Just to let you know, again, you're drinking the poison hoping the other person dies thinking by, oh, by holding on to this, I'm hurting them. You're not. They may be hurting, but it's not because you're holding on to it. Yeah. You know, they might have their own stuff going on in their system. Like you, you don't, you don't have that level of impact by being angry at somebody that they're like, oh, 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 oh my God, it hurts my insides. It doesn't work that way. So it's like, if you want freedom from that, like, you know, do that work, find the forgiveness and then you can you can always go back to that person and be like, hey, I forgive you. And I want you to know that really wasn't okay with me that you did that. But I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to move on from that. I'm ready to not hold this over your head. I don't I want freedom from that as well. Yeah. And and with amazing thing, by the way, the amazing things happen when you have conversations with people to forgive them, you will find that it starts starts clearing. It gives them an opportunity to say what they need to say. And it just starts clearing all this junk from the relationship, these agreements that you've held. And suddenly, like I said before, it creates catharsis. That's what forgiveness does. And suddenly it sparks something and it generates a whole new reality for two people. It's really, really uh, incredible to watch how quickly things can shift in relationships like that. Yeah, go ahead. And just keep this in mind. Forgiveness is not necessarily one of those things that you have to 
create this whole long drawn out thing uh, and have that conversation with that person and sit down and get to this like place. Forgiveness is something that you choose internally to release that part that wants vengeance or feels made wrong or whatever it might be. It is just simply the allowing of letting go of that thing because and you'll notice like if there's something or someone that you're angry about how much of your mind space on a daily basis is being given to that thing or person yeah like just just start to notice like how much time you might be walking driving going to bed waking up taking a shower and your mind is going into like Oh my God, like, oh, I can't believe they did that to me. And I should have said this and I should have done that. And, da, 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 and it's just on and on and on and on. Like every time you're doing that, if you start your day with a tank full of energy, every time you're doing that, you're just wasting this energy away. And this is the same energy that you can use to manifest incredible health, incredible wealth, incredible relationships, but instead you're like a leaky bucket, just leaking all this energy to this person that you hope that as you're thinking all this stuff is being impacted by it. And honestly, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> They're going about their day, right? They're eating their Krispy Kreme and, and watching movies on Netflix and like having life, ha like your thoughts and angry wishes are not impacting them in the least. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm putting that on the bottom of the screen there, like that, you know, our philosophy here and our work went from, hey, let's do a lot of this external stuff out here to it's like, hey, there's there's an entire band of experience that human beings can have multidimensional, nearly infinite type of experiences. But in society, we've narrowed it down to a very small field. It's like if we have 100 percent of emotions, it's like 15 percent are OK. And so most people are really stuck in this role of trying to constantly make themselves feel better very energy intensive, like Elon was just pointing to, instead of honestly just getting better at feeling. Here's the truth. Some days you wake up, you're upset. You don't know why. Some days you wake up, you're sad. Some days you wake up, you're afraid. You don't know why. It just is like something in the malaise, something in the energy, something in the world is happening. There's, there's a lot of stuff happening that's more than just your thoughts, right? And so, so much of the work in the world is, oh, well, let's change your thoughts. Yeah, okay. But it's like, what about all the rest of this? Like, if you change your thoughts, but all this stuff is happening in the world, still happening in the world, right? So at the end of the day, it's like resiliency, alignment. All this stuff comes from actually having uh, emotional flu fluidity, emotional intelligence. And that means well beyond that is even more important that's underneath all that is the energetic fluidity of the body. Does energy move cleanly and easily through your body or does it get stuck? And then something gets activated and a part gets activated. And then you have a, 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 a feeling in your body that disturbs you or doesn't feel good. And then the mind checks in and runs a program to try to protect you or create safety from that. That's what's really going on, right? So just mindset is very important. It's a crucial foundation for gaining awareness and understanding how it is that we operate in the world and then having the ability to be responsible and shift it. And then there's all, all really the inner world is what matters, because the inner world would direct how you experience your outer world. Even in these times with inner alignment, we can find safety. And so it's really not about making yourself feel better. It's about learning how to feel more or feel better. Like, you know, I'm sorry, or, or learning how to just, yeah, just basically like, how do I feel everything and not be scared of it? Yeah. Now, as if an experience comes into my view and I'm, I'm waking up and I'm feeling sad this morning, instead of going, what went wrong? How do I change this? What do I got to change about my world? Oh my God, my money, my relationships, this, that. You guys know how like you have one little issue in your life and it just spirals into like everything. Suddenly you fucking hate everything about your life. Your body fucking looks fat today. Your relationship is shit. There's not enough money in the bank account. And this fucking thing is happening, right? Like that's it. But if like you can just create an awareness of inner awareness of the subtle energy in your body, you're like, wow, that's uncomfortable. And then you learn how to sit with it. And so that kind of lends itself into this third part that I want to speak to you guys about because it's ironic that we're talking about acceleration and I'm going to tell you a doorway to acceleration is slowing down. <laughs> I, I just want one, one yeah. thing before you jump to that one. Cause 
Alex uh, just wrote this beautiful thing. She said, I thought I'd forgiven my housemate for everything that has happened, but some days I feel angry at her and sad about the whole situation. I just want to point out forgiveness is not a one and done thing. Okay. Like this notion that you're going to forgive this person and that's it. I'm over it. Like the person's forgiven. I'm telling you right now, forgiveness is something that you get to do over and over and over again. And, and the distinction I want to create is this forgiveness is in the moments that that thought and the mind tries to take you into that place. You consciously in the moment release. You say, I no longer hold that to be true. I fully forgive you. And you might have to do that a million times, like legit a million times. And that's perfect forgiveness. It is just having conscious awareness enough to not let this start to spin out of control like it does. So Alex, yeah, there's plenty of people that have, you know, wronged me that it still comes up. Like I'll meditate and I'll have that urge of like, mm, I can't believe they did that to me. And it's right in that moment that I'm like, I let that go too, right? Because what's creeping up to the surface is this other part that maybe still was holding on or this other part that still didn't feel safe or didn't feel heard or whatever it might be. It just in the moment, just allowing for, allowing for, allowing for and releasing. Yeah. And truly just because someone said it here, uh, Alexandra, she said, you know, thanks for saying that. I thought there was something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with any of us. We're just, we're being human. Yeah. And what we've done is we've we've applied a lot of conditioning to what morality is, what's allowed and what's not allowed. And so everything that's uncomfortable in our society has been deemed as like unworthy or not supposed to be here. And I want you guys to notice that even in society, when it comes to medicine, everything is about like, oh, you have discomfort now? Let's take it away immediately. Oh, you have a headache? Pop this pill. You have this thing? Take this. You got that? We got the shot for it, right? It's like, it's like the 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 desire of experiencing it is gone. And 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 that's the point is like Elon and I, when we work with people, I could tell you a true goal of ours is hey, you can you can be with anything that arises. We we can help you with that, right? And the other part is um sorry, I kind of like lost my train of thought there. <clears throat> uh, with the taking a pill. Oh yeah, is that instead of uh, being in pursuit of pleasure, like just pursuing pleasure all the time, which again, we're all, you guys are all really well versed in that. How's that going? Instead of pursuing pleasure, it's like the observance, the experience, watching it becomes the pleasure. And so it no longer matters if you wake up with sadness or regret or anger towards this person that you forgave in the past before you learn how to just watch. So seat of awareness, it is a higher state of consciousness. This is what we do in our programs, by the way, in intuitive mind. I'll tell you guys more about that in a little bit, but it's like, that's what we train you guys on is like, it's not that what you're experiencing is not what you need to be working on. It's how you're viewing it. And I don't mean perspective. I legitimately mean the, le the layer, excuse me, the level of consciousness that you're sitting at while viewing is, is what matters. The quality of where you're viewing from is what matters. Perspective, again, is still mind. It's still a lot of conditioning. Yeah. Oh, I'm seeing it this way. Let me change my conditioning. An important part of evolving. And there's something well beyond that as well. Okay. And yeah. so again, all this is kind of pointing at the same thing here, which I is like- say One quick story. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, so Buddha, for example, like they, they, you know, when they were talking about Buddha, so Buddha sat under a tree, went into this like deep, deep, interconnected, enlightened place, right? And they say that uh, before he got to that place, he actually experienced every moment of sadness, anger, frustration, upset, everything in one moment. Like, like, like imagine every moment that you've ever had, he experienced in one moment. And to Guy's point, this is like, if I even said to you, hey, go to your meaningful memory right now. For some of you, that's already activating your system because the mind doesn't know the difference between it happening now and it happened then it has no the, the same reaction is going to happen in your body so buddha doesn't experience one take all of them even the ones that you don't remember and like in this one moment but the guy's point 
it wasn't that he was trying to perceive it differently and like reframe it and make it this and make it that and say, oh, you know, my mom didn't do this to me. I just made that mean that. And he didn't do any of that stuff. He just got to a level of awareness that could watch and experience all of those moments without any of that attachment yeah without any of that hooking or connecting to or any of that stuff and that's what trans what they say is that's what transmuted all of that stuff and allowed him to pierce through and get to that place of enlightenment so i love that distinction guy because it's it's not about perceiving a situation differently you've done the nlp and reframe stuff of like oh you know my husband doesn't mean this when he said that but like you keep getting upset yeah my kids aren't doing this to me like they're actually my growth partners and blah. like you can tell yourself all that but you're still getting pissed off and it's when you actually that's okay but when you like actually can drive like dive in and notice with a heightened place of awareness, the parts inside of you that don't feel okay, and those get transmuted, and those get healed, then all of the stuff that you've been trying to figure out out there, around your body, your relationship, your your money situation, all of it, no long you no longer need to go out and fix and maneuver and change any of that stuff because it, it just your reality will alter because it no longer needs to reflect back to you that thing inside. Yeah. Beautiful. And and I want to touch upon this over here. So Natalie said, and, and it's great. Natalie's been doing incredible work the last few months. And uh, she says, yep, I felt like shit the past few weeks, but instead of letting it drag me down, I can see for what it is. And, and that for her is a huge leap in her awareness. Huge. And she says, not perfectly. I just, she continued replying, uh, not perfectly, but a lot more aware. And that's a huge leap in her awareness. Now, the next level of that awareness is it doesn't even matter if it drags you down. <laughs> And, and that's the thing. That's what I'm talking about here. It's not about Natalie getting to a place where she feels good all the time, because then every time she doesn't feel like she's in that pocket exactly where she's supposed to be, all that stuff is going to come back and go, what the fuck is wrong? Why did I revert to this place? It's like, and that's the point is like, what if that doesn't even matter? Because what she's waking up to and, and will come to in her own time is that she can view even the parts that seem like they're dragging her down with the same compassion, neutrality, and love as the parts when she's in elation and connection and joy, because the pleasure again comes from the quality of the view versus the shift in the perspective. And in the beginning, I, and not even in the beginning for a long time, it is important to be like, I can change my perspective here. I can shift that. Oh, that does make me feel a little bit better. But what we're pointing at is that it doesn't change what's happening in your system. The mind is, is attempting to recondition itself through habit, but you might still like something happens and you still get fucking triggered. If the quality of the awareness is so open and vast and big that it can accept all experiences through that same thing, like Elon was pointing out with the Buddha, some of you guys may have even had those experiences with like ayahuasca or plant medicines. Like it's like suddenly like there's all this stuff. It, it's like you could only point out as like I saw so much and it happened in a moment in time. It was like a, an entire download came into you, right? And so these things are, are real. They happen. It's a, it's part of our, our human mysticism that makes this available. So, and that's what we're all working on. It's like, can we sit in that awareness and watch our lives, watch reality unfold as it does and just gain pleasure from the observing, not from what it is that we're observing or our opinions about what is being observed. And so to kind of start wrapping this whole thing up is like the, ironically, in order to accelerate, you have to slow down. Yeah. And, and it's twofold. Um, if you're working on something a lot, and this is something you need to test for yourself to see that it works, putting in a ton of effort into some project, a business, a relationship, and you're still not getting the results, stop doing anything. Just stop. Go on vacation, take a break, just stop. And what you're going to see is that you're generating energy and you keep moving. And so it doesn't have time to catch up with you. Prior to getting married, I would systematically travel somewhere in the world on purpose every three months, whether I wanted to or not, to get away from my business, my job, everything. And the reason I did that is because when I started traveling more, every time I traveled, we made more money as a company. Not when I was working, when I was traveling and doing nothing. 
I saw that it happened so many times. I'm like, this cannot be a coincidence. And we have that line that we use all the time. It's like, how many coincidences do you need to see before you stop believing in coincidences? And, and that was the reality. And we, we tested that last year by taking a six week sabbatical, not even knowing if we had a company to come back to. And in that same period of time, our, our revenue as a company tripled in that same period of time. Explain that to me, right? So slowing down is really important. And why? Because most of society right now is stuck in the sympathetic nervous system response. Okay. Sympathetic means a fight or a flight response. Parasympathetic is where the body relaxes, nervous system relaxes. So even your heart moment by moment is going through sympathetic and parasympathetic response. Every time it op- can, relaxes, parasympathetic. Every time it contracts, sympathetic, right? And so this is a very natural thing for us to do. But for most of us, our nervous systems are at a high tension. Our body, our fascia, our muscles, everything is in a defensive posture, kind of looking out in the world, waiting for the next thing to go wrong and for us to get defensive and write about it and all those kind of things. And so we have a world, really, literally like almost all of society stuck in this way of being. And so if you don't have a daily practice where you like, that's why that chair is there, sit down and meditate. That's why we offer you guys meditations here in the group as the first thing that we do. Here's an active healing meditation. Here's how you train your nervous system to relax. Healing doesn't happen from an insight. It happens when the nervous system relaxes. Let me say that again. Healing doesn't happen because you have an insight. It happens because you train your body, your nervous system to relax and and it trains it how to be energetically fluid. When that happens, you substantially increase your experience of well-being, safety, and authentic connection. And if you ever want to heal yourself, you want to increase safety, well-being, and authentic connection. And so if you aren't taking time every single day to slow down your system, drop your awareness into your body, open up the awareness into a higher state of consciousness to get all the things that we teach at our live events, then you might be transforming ideas, but you're not transforming yourself. That's a really, really important distinction there. Okay. So I don't want us to go too, too much more, but those are like the three things. Again, we talked about agreement today, forgiveness, and slowing down again, all that we have resources in the group for you, meditations, trainings, stuff like that. Um, what we, I told you I had a gift for you guys and that's why I want to get to it. Uh, our next event is coming up here in 11 days. So September 25th and 26th, it's a Saturday, Sunday. Uh, we do a two day intensive training you guys on everything we just talked about here. More importantly than the mindset piece, which we can, we can show you, we can point to you where to get that stuff too, in terms of our work. Is, is training your your inner system, like your inner being, okay? So if you guys uh, want to attend the event, you go over to intuitivemind.live, intuitivemind.live. However, because you attended here today, we wanted to give you a uh, $100 off coupon for buying or purchasing and enrolling uh, in the event. So at checkout, after you go there, and again, I really urge you to go watch the testimonials more than listening to Elon or I talk about any of these things, go watch the testimonials. They're just, they're breathtaking, bottom line, right? It's just, you'll see through people's experiences and it's not necessarily even what they're saying, like tune into how they feel as a human being. They just went through something that was completely unexpected to them. This event, what we do here is completely unexpected to people in their experience because I've never experienced it before. It's like, we're giving you the iPhone for the first time and we're like, you can listen to music, find your way around the world and do a search at the same time. And you're like, if that's your first time, you'll be like, holy fuck, I had no idea this was even possible. So intuitivemind.live, that's what this experience is about. You type in a hundred bucks into the coupon code section and guess what? It saves you a hundred bucks. So um, that's there for you again. Go, please, please, please go watch the testimonials. If you're new to the community, um, if you have any questions about any of the work that we provide here, not just the live event, but some of the other programs that we have, you just want to have a conversation with somebody from our team so they can help you kind of navigate what it is that we do here. What's the best, what's the best path? What do most of our clients do? Maybe you're more advanced. Maybe you're just getting started and you just kind of have to navigate your way through our programs or you have questions, comments, whatever. Um, you do have an opportunity to talk to people from our team. We have people in the group here who are our concierge who are here to help you guys all the time. They're pretty much available. They're at all different time zones, so they're available all throughout the day. Um, just let us know, and you can just type in contact in the comment box below, 
and then one of them will reach out to you to have a conversation. Or, or you could just go to callsatori.com and just book a 15 minute call with them right now. And so if you have any questions, I would just say, just go book that call, get on the phone with them, have a quick conversation, let them know about uh, where you're at, what you're dealing with. And they can be like, Hey, this is, this is what's going to give you the most value right now. That's really what those conversations are about. Again, so intuitive mind.live, save yourself a hundred bucks, or let us know you want to have a conversation or book that call. Okay. Any closing remarks? Uh, yeah, just the sooner you get in, um, oh, yeah. that hundred bucks is going bye bye in uh, in a little bit. Uh, the sooner you get in, you also get access to uh, a pre training module. So I would urge you, if this is something that you're wanting to do, like get in soon, so that you can actually go through the training prior to the um, live event. Uh, the hundred dollar promotion I think ends Friday. Um, we'll be Thursday talking about night, it. Technically. Okay, Thursday night. We'll be talking about it for the next few days in the group. But you guys are the first ones here, so please take advantage of that and uh, jump in. We'd love to work with you, show you what we got, and uh, of course, if it's not totally an enthralling experience for you, then we have a satisfaction uh, guarantee on our program. Just ask for your money back. We truly believe we should only uh, earn your money if you get value from our work. So. Um, you're welcome to join us and we look forward to having you there. Love you guys. Thank you for your attention today. We realize there's a lot of places you could be. So thank you for being here with us this afternoon. We love you and let us know how we can support you. We'll see you next time. Bye, buddy.